Gurbani often talks about Trayagun. Trayagun meaning three qualities. You must have wondered, what are these three qualities? These three qualities are what the creation are made up of. When Guru Nanak Dev Ji said to us, Ek Oankar. Ek meaning there is only one. And from that one, from that formless, came Oong, came the sound. Within this vibration and sound is the three qualities, which makes up the entire creation. Let's put a name to these three qualities with the help of Bhagat Kabir Ji. Rajagun, Tamagun, Satgun kehiye, eh teri sab maya. So we've got Rajogun, we've got Tamogun, and we've got Satogun. All of these three qualities have been linked with the deity from the older scriptures and texts. So let's have a look at which deities have been linked with these three qualities. So with the Rajogun, it's been Brahma. And then with Satogun, it's Vishnu. And with Tamogun, it's Shiva. And that just helps us to create these characters linked with these qualities for us to be able to remember it better. So let's take a look at Rajogun. Rajogun represents the creative power, or we can say it represents action, movement. So how does that relate to us? So how can we relate to that in our lives? So because there is Rajogun inside of us, we're able to do whatever it is that we do in life. Our drive, our desires, all comes from the energy of Rajogun. If that didn't exist, we wouldn't be able to get out of bed. We wouldn't even make it to the sink to brush our teeth, never mind anything else. Anything creative, when we're in that creative mode, it all comes from Rajogun. So that's the relevance of it. Even when we look at the whole idea of birth and death, and then sustaining that life. First, it comes from this creative power. So birth is linked then with Rajogun. So you can see how Rajogun is important. No matter what task we want to carry out in life, even if it's a project that we want to do, it might be a community project, whatever it is we're going to do, the drive for that comes from Rajogun. Let's take a look at Satogun. Satogun represents that sustaining ability. So now we've got this body which came from the energy of Rajogun, but now this body needs to be sustained. And that is then Satogun, sustained through food, sustained through air, that air that gives us oxygen. And then that is then linked with, how is that linked then with our nature? then that is linked with just like to sustain this body, that one that has created all these three, the ek, is giving by nature, meaning provides us, provides this body with air, so it can be sustained, provides this body with that food, and that food then, it goes through the process of breaking down, becoming a part of this, part of this body, becoming blood within us, that then sustains us in that same way that nature of Satogun then is of a nature of being giving. So there's this perfect balance that this whole world and creation is working under. So the nature of giving comes from Satogun. And then we've got Tamogun. Tamogun is when something comes to rest. And Tamogun is that what we know as when something comes to an end, meaning death. End as how we see and how we perceive it. But it's actually this constant motion and cycle, constantly working from birth to sustain, nurture from that, then to death. And it doesn't actually, that's not really the end because then it, that cycle just starts again. You think of a leaf, the cycle that the leaf goes through. And then it's this constant motion between these three that are balancing life. So 
let's take a look at that tamogun, the relevance for it in our life. So when this body now gets to a certain age and the energy starts to reduce and then it starts to come to a rest, anything that comes into being, think of a thought. A thought is first born, which is then said to be that rajogun. And then as we are contemplating, remaining in that thought, and then we are nurturing that thought during that period, which can help us to carry out some form of activity in life. So that then is satogun. And then that thought, when it comes to rest, meaning it stops, that can be looked at then as tamogun. So in the same way, just like this body comes to an end and then it becomes ash and it goes back to the earth, that is then referred to the tamogun energy that brings the body to that rest or to an end or death, however we want to call it. But here's now a little catch. So that sounds all fine. That sounds like that's a perfect balance that this whole world and creation is working in. Imagine having all of these perfectly balanced. So imagine now you've got some form of vehicle that works on three wheels, so a three-wheeler. So those three wheels have to be equal and all have the same amount of air in them, for example, for, them to for that vehicle to have that perfect balance to be able to work. And in that same way, when these energies are balanced inside of us, then our life is smooth like that vehicle. Then we've got enough drive to go out and to achieve and do things, to be able to do things for our self, for others. So then Satogun comes in. It's not that we just got a drive to go out and earn for ourselves or to look after this body, but because then Satogun is inside of us as well, all nice and balanced, we're also then thinking of others. We're also then giving in nature as well. So I might have that drive for a project, like a longer project to distribute food to those that may not have access to food. So that drive then initially comes from Rajogun. And then that Satogun is perfectly balanced there because that giving nature as well. And then Tamogun, it plays its part as well. We, our brain doesn't go into this overdrive of things where we can't stop being in that constant drive and forget about other aspects of life. So that one drive that allows us to do that task, but then Tamogun helps us to rein in as well and to come to that place of rest as well inside of us. So there's this beautiful, perfect balance that is working inside of us. So I did say there's a catch. Guru Amar Das Ji, Padshah Ji says to us that Tehi Guni Sansar Brahma Sutta Suttya Rain Vihani the saying that the world is Tehi Guni Sansar Brahma Sutta is asleep in Tehi means three Tehi Gun Gun means qualities Tehi Guni Sansar Brahma are asleep in this doubt Sutta are asleep Ran Vihani and then the saying Ran Ran means night the night of life Vahani means passing. The night of life is passing them by, asleep in these three qualities. To be asleep in these three qualities means when you start to think or believe, or let's put it this way, your reality is that you are only these three qualities. There is nothing beyond that. There is nothing powering these. There is no connection to that one. There is no connection to that oneness. So we are consumed in the sleep of ego, in the sleep of I am. I am the giver. I am the one that has the drive, not recognizing there is anybody behind that. The light, the jyot, that is behind this, that permission, that one, feeling this 
individuality that there is me, there's I am and you are completely separate. So in that sense, we become asleep. When we are consumed then by that ego, then these three qualities become unbalanced inside of us. So let's have a look at what are some of the signs, what are some of the symptoms as the doctors refer to it. What are some of the symptoms to look out for when we know that there's an unbalance inside of us due to the ego, due to being asleep? So let's take a look at, in the same order, we looked at Rajogun first. Let's take a look at Rajogun. If that becomes more predominant, so imagine go back to that vehicle, the three-wheeler, one wheel now is of completely different size. It's oversized now and it starts to make that vehicle completely off balance and it, more of the weight is on that. So how do we know more of the weight is in the Rajogun for us now? When we can't stop, when these constant desires inside of us under thisana agha, when there's this burning fire of desires that just don't switch off, when we become completely unconscious and these desires start to consume us and they become and we start to think that's what I am. Not being able to stop and knowing that actually there's no balance in life. We start getting greedy for wanting more and more, needing to, we think that I'm only going to be satisfied if I have more of this, that we constantly in that survival instinct of thinking that, oh, if I've got this much food, maybe if I've got this much, then I'll be safe or then I'll be okay, then I'll be satisfied. This constant racing mind, Guru Sahib, you refer to that as Sahas Khata. You've reached that thousand, you thought that was going to be enough for you and satisfy you. But then you have another goal, which is to get to the hundred thousand, thinking that's going to satisfy you. But Guru Sahib Ji says, There's no tripti, there's no satisfaction. So then the Guru refers to this as Chanchalamat. E man chanchala. They're saying, oh my mind, you've become so chanchal. Now this mind is constantly caught up in this cleverness, thinking that, yeah, I can do it through wealth, I can do it through this. Guru Sahib Ji talk about, now you're starting to become impure. Man ka sutak lob hai, jehwa sutak kood, akhi sutak vekhana. But now your eyes, they don't come to a rest. There's that imbalance, no rest with your eyes, constantly looking at others with a lustful eye, thinking that maybe if I get this, maybe I have a more of this. Akhi suta kavekana partreya partan rupa tan, looking at the wealth of others. This is now Rajogun has become so predominant inside of you. This drive doesn't stop, you can't switch off. Whatever you're doing throughout the day, whatever your work is. You come to sit in the evening to try and relax, have a meal with your family, try and sit down to meditate, read your evening prayers, do Rehra Sahib, but it still doesn't stop. It starts thinking to starts thinking about, oh, I should have done it that way. I should I could maybe I could get more if I did it that way. The mind becomes fickle. It doesn't come to a stop. You've now gone into this overdrive. So that, that are some of the symptoms of Rajogun becoming predominant. And then they will overlap as well. So don't try and make them so d definitive and black and white. They will start to overlap once the imbalance is there. Let's take a look at now Tamogun. Tamogun, how do you know that that has become more predominant? Physically, you'd want to sleep more. You don't ever feel satisfied with how much ever sleep you've had. You just want to have more and more. And way over some, obviously, speak of six hours or eight hours. But then you just, that's not enough. You just want more and more of that sleep. Constantly feeling fatigued, tired, lethargic. 
that drive is very dim and low as well. And then there'll be a lot of frustration. There'll be a lot of anger. The Guru talks about calm, growth, kaya, ko, gale, that this calm from the Rajogun, this desire which was supposed to be for survival, has now become completely un unconscious and has consumed us. From that, then unfulfilled desires, just racing mind will then turn into frustration and then anger, calm, growth. Then it starts to affect the body as well. Somebody that is constantly living in this stress mode. And from, so I'm just going back and forth a little bit. From Rajogun, being constantly minds racing, you start to experience things like anxiety, feeling anxious. And then that can actually go into Tamogun from that extreme of anxiousness and then even feeling low, feeling drained. And then there's anger as well. And it starts to affect your body. You start to have more and more diseases come up. Those diseases are then coming from that anger, high blood pressure and whatever others that are caused by your body being in that constant high stress response. Other things of Tamogun, is you'll start to then actually look down at people. Whatever other people have, you wanna have that. You wanna, you're willing to do whatever it takes to get that, to bring people down. You have no care for other people's feelings or anything of that sort. There is no sense of righteousness left within that mind. And that will then you, when this starts to happen, you know then that Tamogun has become predominant inside of you. Looking at the other nature of these, in the Rajogun, when it hasn't gone to Tamogun, in Rajogun, it's about just self-drive to accumulate more. But you're still living quite a fair life. You're in that state of whatever's mine's mine, whatever's yours, yours. But in Tamogun, it's more like whatever's mine's mine, but whatever's yours should be mine as well. So you can see the birti, how it changes. When that quality is more predominant in you, you will be then attracted to Tamogun food as well. Because food has these three qualities and certain foods have more Tamogun in them, more Satogun in them. So then Tamogun foods, how do you know it's a Tamogun food? Often it's that type of food that isn't fresh, has got low water content, has been sitting on the shelf for a lot of long time, heavily processed, a lot of preservatives. And then when you eat that type of food, it starts to make you more lethargic instead of energize you. That's very food that was made meant to nurture you, it does the complete opposite for you. And then it depends on how you make that food. You can make that food from Tamogun Birti, from a state of Tamo where you're frustrated and angry. And then you're transferring that energy into it. So as you start to come to this realization, you will start to see that the whole world is a play of these three, and it's a play. But Guru Gobind Singh Ji didn't get consumed by that play. They said that Maho Parama Purkko Dasa Dekan Ayon Jagat Tamasha. I've come to watch the play of this world. I'm not consumed by it. I'm not in it in that way. I'm just watching it. How do you watch it? Watching it means when you are in that pure higher consciousness. That Guru Amar Das you refer to as Jotapad, the fourth state, which is complete consciousness and you can watch the play of these three and you can then consciously use these energies as and how you need to use them. Guru Amar Das Ji say, Chauthe Padma hai, Sahaj hai, Gurmak Palle Pai. In that fourth state is that Sahaj, is that equipoise, that complete balance. And then when there's that complete balance, as Guru Gobind Singh Ji did, then they would use the energy of Tomogun as well. 
Just as the Mughun, when it's imbalance, can become anger, but Guru Gobind Singh Ji taps into it and consciously uses it from that fourth state. That fourth state is that pure consciousness, uses it as Jabe Baan Lagyo, Tabe Ros Jagyo. They're able to use this warrior spirit just like you would need to then when you're carrying out a righteous act in protecting others, helping others, saving others, protecting yourself, saving yourself from being attacked or whatever that situation may be, not letting others completely walk all over you. Sangaji, that in that way you can use that positively for yourself. So when it's when there's an imbalance, so the imbalance could be of Satogun as well. A lot of people don't talk about this. Because in Satogun, it's that higher quality of when you become so giving, caring and kind. And that's the positive part of it. Guru Sahib Ji talking about where they say to us that Pun daan ka kare sarir, so girhi ganga ka neer. When your whole body becomes about Pun, doing good for others, daan, giving to others. That's, the, that's when it's in complete balance with the rest. But when it becomes imbalance and that becomes predominant, yes, you're giving and you're doing all of these things. Number one, when you're asleep in Satogun, you're giving in this way, Hon vich ditta, hon vich leya. You're giving with, I am giving, not recognizing ek date ek pe khari ji. Not recognizing that it's the one that's giving you the energy and the ability to even be in that state, to give and recognizing that oneness, but still that I am giving to you. When it becomes imbalanced, what happens is, yes, you're kind and giving, but the Guru gave us miri and piri, that saintlyhood and then that warriorhood as well. Being not, the imbalance is then not being able to even go into some form of righteous battle. Not being able to stand up for yourself or anyone else. Even if it means when somebody else's life is being put at danger or whatever it may be, because there's an imbalance, you're not able to act in that moment. You're not able to stand up or speak or do anything or take any action towards that direction. Sometimes it just means you need to speak out about something but you're not able to because there's an imbalance because then that tamo, remember all three wheels need to be perfectly balanced for this life, for us to be in Sahaj, to be in that equipoise from a conscious level, that fourth state. So tamogun helps us not to close our eyes and be passive as well. So Sangaji, hopefully, this can help us to understand these three qualities, this vast play of even the five elements that this creation is made out of. Different elements hold more of a certain quality inside of them, but they come together to create this perfect creation. So not to look at them as bad or good, to look at them that they're actually a perfect creation of that one. But the issue comes is when we fall asleep. Guru Sahib Ji says, but with the kirpa, with the grace of the Guru, that those jan, those servants, those that become the servant of the Guru, awaken from this and then they reach that jauthe padam hai, sahaj hai, those Guru-centered ones can then actually take this into their palla, take this into their joli, into their embrace, Sangadiji, become conscious and live an amazing, beautiful, balanced life and using them consciously. So now you can keep an eye out within yourselves if there's that imbalance. Vaheguru Ji Ka Khalsa Vaheguru Ji Ki Fateh